The vast majority of German routes in Train Sim World 4 are set in the 2010s or later, which often makes them feel very boring and formulaic. Case in point, München to Augsburg and Hamburg to Lübeck. Time period-wise, there are at least three exceptions to the rule, with two of them being set in the 1990s. Seeing as I've already looked at the excellent Niedertalbahn and mediocre Bremen to Oldenburg, I'll be discussing the Mainz to Koblenz route this time. This add-on was first released in March 2023, back in the criminally short-lived DSW3 era. I held off getting it for a fair while because of the high price, 57 New Zealand dollars, and I initially considered this route to be less important than the likes of the Niedertalbahn or Cross City Line. After seeing that it was on sale for 50% off in the 2023 Steam Autumn Sale, and asking people in a community post what they thought of the route, I thought I'd finally pick it up and try it out for myself. In the end, the route cost me $28.49 NZD. And to give you an idea of how long these reviews can take to come to fruition, I started working on this one in November 2023. Unlike most German routes in TSW, Link Rhein Strecker is set in the late 20th century, specifically the year 1997. With this add-on, you get the 92 kilometers or 57 miles, of track from Mainz Hauptbahnhof to Koblenz Hauptbahnhof in the German state of Rhineland Palatinata. This is yet another linear route, of which we seem to have far too many in TSW. Despite already knowing the route's time period, it took me a while to realize that 1997 also saw the release of Around the World and Du Hast, popular songs from Daft Punk and Rammstein respectively. One of the stations on this route, namely Trexlingshausen, reminds me of the lyrics in Du Hast, for some reason. Link Reinstrecker is a remake of a route that already exists in Train Simulator Classic, but the original version is set in the modern day while continuing past Mainz and up to Frankfurt am Main Hauptbahnhof. I have no idea why Dovetail decided to cut the route coverage at Mainz for TSW, instead of going all the way to Frankfurt am Main. On the motive power scene, this route includes two classic electric locomotives, which do a great job at maintaining the vintage style of this route. The locomotives in question are the BR103 and BR110-3. The 103 was new to TSW at the time, while the 110-3 was reused from the Bremen to Oldenburg pack. However, the 110 is supplied in a different livery this time, namely Orient Red, if I'm not mistaken, and her accompanying Anwagen coaches, also reused from Bremen to Oldenburg, are now in a charming white and mint green livery. As for the mighty BR103, she is supplied in the Deutsche Bundesbahn Trans Europe Express livery, and hauls intercity services along the Mainz to Koblenz section. The coaches she hauls are the AVMZ and BPMZ IC types, but as I know almost nothing about 90s era German railways, I don't know whether or not this choice of coaches is accurate for this particular route. However, I still like the general aesthetic of German trains in the 1990s. For some historical context, the BR-103 was an incredibly powerful electric locomotive built for fast intercity services in the early 1970s. Four prototypes were built in 1965, with the first production example entering service in 1970. Over the next three years, another 144 production BR-103s were built, and they would go on to have a long and successful service life. With a power output of a staggering 9,980 horsepower, the BR-103 was one of the most powerful conventional electric locomotives ever built, and her normal maximum speed was an impressive 200 km per hour. After the introduction of Intercity Express, or ICE, trains in 1991, the BR-103s lost their place as Deutsche Bahn's flagship, and were gradually relegated to less important duties until the final examples were retired in 2003. Out of the 145 production BR-103s that were built, 17 have been preserved.
I had mixed first impressions of the BR-103. For starters, the sound of her air whistle is identical to the BR-110-3, and I'm pretty sure it was reused from the BR-420 NTS Classic. The BR-103's engine room, for want of a better term, is fully modelled, but there are invisible walls preventing you from walking all the way down the corridor. The same issue that's present on the TGV duplex power cars in that terrible Marseille to Avignon add-on. I find this issue on the BR-103 to be rather annoying, and it's inconsistent too, since there are some locomotives in TSW in which you can walk down the full length of the corridor, as demonstrated here with the Siemens ACS-64 and a few German electrics also have walked through engine rooms. I'm not going to comment on what it's like to drive the BR110-3 and a Karlsruher Kopf cab car, because I already did that in the Bremen to Oldenburg review. As for the BR103, her driving experience is very similar to the BR110-3 because she also has a tap changer instead of a conventional throttle. But in this case, the tap changer has 39 notches instead of only 28. I've found that it's best to not go above notch 8 to pull away from a station stop, and avoid going up to the higher notches until you're doing around 50 km per hour. And if you try a full throttle start, you'll most likely overload the traction motors in which case you would then have to close the main circuit breaker before trying to apply power again. Timetable mode includes 113 playable services for the BR-103, 318 services for the BR-110-3, and only 39 with the Karlsruher Kopf cab car leading. The BR-103 hauls fast express trains that come from or go to a wide variety of destinations in Germany and neighbouring countries. The international destinations mentioned in-game include Geneva, Mont Blanc, Switzerland, Milan, Italy, Praha, Karlstein, Czech Republic, and Budapest, Hungary. Now if only we could get some actually good Swiss routes in TSW to break Rivet Games' monopoly, as well as Italian, Czech, and Hungarian routes for that matter. The one continental European route that I'd quite like to see in TSW, apart from lines A and C on the Lyon Metro, is lane M1 on the Budapest Metro. It may be very short, at only 4.4 kilometres long, but it's still very significant as the first subway line in continental Europe, and it still uses those really cool, albeit rather dated looking, GANS MFAV units that have been in service since 1973. As for the BR110-3, she is often used on push-pull services with the Anwagen coaches, and these ones actually call at most of the intermediate stations, unlike the BR-103's services. The BR-110-3 can also take freight trains from time to time, with 19 of her services being freight runs, although most of them are split into three parts, for whatever reason. Only two units from other add-ons layer onto Link Reinstrecker. These are the BR-628-2 diesel multiple units from the Niedertalbahn, with 49 playable services, as well as the BR-401 ICE-1 electric set from Kassel to Würzburg. The ICE-1 only has two playable services on this route, where I see her presence as being largely pointless, but that's not to say that I think the Kassel to Würzburg route is good by comparison. It's actually pretty boring. The BR-103's passenger services are all non-stop runs, taking between 54 and 58 minutes to cover the full Mainz to Koblenz section, as opposed to around 1 hour and 36 minutes if you were to take a stopping service with the BR110-3. The highest permitted speed on this route is 160 km per hour, but there aren't many sections where you can go that fast. Indeed, the speed limit usually varies between 90 and 140 km per hour for most of the line. 
For this review, I tried driving the BR103 on a service that's left Mainz Halt Bahnhof at 1347. It was a passenger run up to Koblenz, and although there were no intermediate passenger stops, I still had to stop for a red signal at Ingelheim. Fortunately, the DMU that went out ahead of me went off down another line at Gau Algersheim, so she wasn't in my way for too long. What made the run enjoyable was the BR-103 herself. Her physics are neither overpowered nor underpowered, and the little sounds made by the control levers gives the impression that they've got proper weight, unlike the overly sensitive throttle and brake lever on the BR-642 diesel multiple unit. As a reminder, that's the unit that comes with the Maintalbahn. One time, I was driving a BR110-3 back to Mainz and stopped at Niederheimbach on the way. At this station, I noticed that the last two coaches were left off the end of the platform, and yet their doors actually stayed closed. Just when I thought this game didn't have any kind of selective door opening, and if any other routes have it as well, then I haven't noticed it yet. The scenery on this route is a mixed bag, to say the least. A nice little detail I noticed was the leaves being blown about on the platform at Rennes. It's an odd animation, but I still appreciate small touches like this. In fact, it's so small that one could say it's essentially an invisible touch. There is a misplaced stop marker at Gull Algersheim, on the main island platform to be specific. It should be set further back from the abandoned section of the platform. And meanwhile, further along the line, I noticed one section of missing overhead wires at Bingen Rhein Hauptbahnhof. Any amount of missing OHLE is nothing short of ridiculous. Although this was the only time I noticed it on Link Rheinstrecker, and it's nowhere near as bad as the sheer amount of missing OHLE on München to Augsburg, which still hasn't been fixed by the way. There's an odd collectible on this route, in the form of a cuckoo clock, of all things. This reminds me of something really dumb. A Peppa Pig episode in which her brother, George, was upset over repeatedly missing seeing the cuckoo go off. How that brain-rotting dribble is still going after 20 years is anyone's guess. I like the cobblestone texture on the platform at Mainz Mombach. It's something you don't really see on any of the modern image German routes, whose stations rarely look distinctly different from each other, especially on Hauptstrecke Rhein Ruhr. When you've got the season set to winter, the NPC's feet will disappear through the snow when they sit down on a bench. Elsewhere, at Bingen Rhein Hauptbahnhof, I noticed two men who had their trousers clipping through the bench, but this is pretty tame compared to some of the other, mostly unfixed issues I've seen with the NPCs in this game. I remember hearing about an annoying situation with the passenger information screens on this route, while it was still in development. The real Mainz to Koblenz line did have them in 1997, but Dovetail didn't implement them in-game because they claimed that they couldn't find enough resources to accurately model the screens. At least, that's the explanation that I remember hearing, but it still leaves the finished product looking less realistic as a result. Another thing that gets on my nerves, although this issue is not isolated to Link Reinstrecker, is the fact that the interiors of the trackside buildings are not modelled. This is annoying because it hinders the immersion, and I thought the whole point of this game was to be able to get up out of the train and go explore the world. You can't really do that when the buildings, such as the station building at Niederheimbach, don't actually have any interiors modelled. Just down the line from Rennes, I noticed a bit of floating track on the loop next to the main line. Although it's harder to notice, an issue like this is unacceptable in this day and age. Bits of floating track are something I expect to see on the ancient Kuju era routes in TS Classic, like the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway for example, not modern TSW routes released in 2023.
I haven't got much of an opinion on the trees dotted about the distant hills, apart from thinking that they still look better than those on the Arosa line. And once again, I noticed a big patch of land where there's no actual foliage and only a basic 2D grass texture. This one is just around the corner from Sankt Goa station. I thought the route's performance was inconsistent, with the frame rates averaging 60 to 75 FPS out on the main line. I did not enjoy the lag at Mainz Halt Bahnhof, no doubt a result of the increased number of stationary trains, and there were occasional lag spikes throughout that run with the BR-103. Most of the TSW routes tend to run very smoothly on my computer, with not that much lag. On the whole, I still enjoy the experience of running trains alongside a river for a large part of the journey, and this line offers a much longer and more interesting run for the BR110-3 than Bremen to Oldenburg. This route won't appeal to everyone, but that's not the point, and I can recommend it to people who like driving older German electric locomotives, or anyone looking for something a bit out of the ordinary, but even in that sense it doesn't hold a candle to the likes of the Niedertalbahn. I just wish that Link Reinstrecker was extended all the way to Frankfurt am Main, and that we could get more German TSW routes set in the 1990s, or maybe even an earlier time period.